I'd like to jump into a different application for our freeform design and demonstrate X shape. We're going to create this base for our monitor stand using the X shape application. Now, as a reminder, the X shape application is granted with the 3D creator role in the platform. Let's go ahead and jump back into the environment and we'll take a look. Now we left off in our assembly back in X design. I have these a component within my assembly called the base that all has is just two sketch pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and select one of the sketch pictures and select edit component. And I wanna create this component that so far is just the pictures. I wanna create this in the other application X shape. So before I start adding my geometry, I need to switch applications. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. One way is to come over here on the west quadrant of your compass and then come down to the bottom and select X shape. The way that I will typically do it is by simply hitting the X key on my keyboard. Let me hit X and then select X shape. So without changing uh, windows or anything, I'm able to seamlessly transition in between the two applications. Notice over here in the upper left, now it's saying X shape. And I also have a new tab under my features for subdivision. So X shape, that freeform design, the kind of the way it works is rather than parametric modeling, it uses kind of a push-pull clay modeling technique. The way that we start that is by choosing one of our primitives that we have over here on our subdivision tab, choosing a predetermined primitive, and then manipulating the geometry from there. So for this design, I'm gonna start off by placing a box primitive right on top of the origin. Now, as soon as I place that default shape, I'm presenting with a couple on-screen manipulation options. First off, I see the flyouts here. These are gonna be the number of subdivisions or ways that it's breaking up that primitive in each of my three directions. Now, I only wanna have two vertically, so I'll go ahead and reduce that. I'm also gonna adjust the height closer to what it needs. And again, I'm just looking at that reference picture. It doesn't have to be exact. Just eyeball that to there. And then I can scale the whole shape using this on-screen slider. So I'm going to zoom back and scale this back a little bit so I can see the back edge of my primitive match up to the back edge of this sketch picture. Looks pretty good. Once I've got a general shape of what I want, I'll go ahead and hit the green check to confirm that primitive. And you see all these nodes lined up. Everywhere where you see those nodes or even the lines, they call those the loops can be pushed or pulled and manipulated to create your overall geometry. Now, before I start creating the geometry, I wanna work with just one side of this shape and I wanna have the other shape be identical. So I'm gonna come over to the far right button on my subdivision tab and enable symmetry. I'll pick a plane that I wanna have symmetry about and hit green check. Now it'll also highlight the loop where my symmetry plane is. So that way I know um, whether my symmetry is turned on without clicking any buttons. I'll go ahead and rotate my model. Let me rotate my model over to a top view and I'm ready to start selecting and pulling those different entities to uh, manipulate the geometry. I'm gonna box select the lower right hand quadrant over here. And rather than use the directional linear arrows to pull this, I'm gonna use the freeform drag. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and push my model to where it somewhat matches up with my shape. Looks pretty decent. I'll do the same thing again by selecting these nodes, use the same freeform drag tool, try and eyeball it up. I'm going to get these to also push outward. Looks like I went over a little bit. It's okay. And I'll also grab these. Same technique. Push it. And I'm just mimicking that picture in the background. Looks like I've got some pretty good general curvature. I'm also going to pull up this center section so it matches up here. This one, I will go ahead and use the arrows. Pull those like so. And with the, just a couple clicks, 
I was able to drag and manipulate that primitive to create the overall geometry that I want. I want. Now we're not done. Let me go ahead and rotate our model. And I guess I can turn down the opacity slider for the rest of the assembly. Let's go ahead and switch to a right hand view. Now for this one, I'm gonna just use the, the chair, snap to a right hand view orientation. And I want to have the bottom edges or faces of this primitive be lined up and flat with the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first change my mouse selection from anything to just picking faces, and then I'll box select the bottom. With those selected, I can get the fly out and say to crease the edges. Creates a real nice flat edge at the bottom. Now, I don't really need this to be subdivided quite as much. So what I'm gonna do is just select one of these edges. But before I do, I need to change my cursor back to any entities. And then I'm gonna select just an edge on one of these loops for the subdivision and hit the delete key. That'll get rid of that subdivision. I'll go ahead and give it a second to calculate, hit the green check, let it know that's what I want. And I can further manipulate this. Now, I need, this freeform shape to kind of mimic this angle up that I've got in my sketch picture. There's a couple of ways I can do that as well. I can box select these and then use the arrow, maybe push it up a little bit like so. And then I can use the angle rather than inside of this, by the way, is the freeform drag like I did earlier, or I can use this angle and change the angle of that to do it like this. Now, there's a better way to do this. The way that I typically will do this would be the line by a line command. So I'm going to align these entities by a line. That's going to give me a couple of three dots. This is giving me the line that it's going to uh, put the rest of those relative to. So I can just use these dots, maybe get this back edge like so and then use the front one. And I get a little bit better movement and manipulating the shape more how I want. So it's a little bit easier. That looks good. I'll go ahead and confirm that, hit the green check, and I'm done with the first primitive in my design. So I'll go ahead and hit the green check here. I'm done editing that primitive. Now, I wanna add a second one to get my boss that's gonna go around um, the stair axis uh, itself. So I'm going to use a cylinder for this one. So I'll come back to my primitives, select cylinder, and then I'll place that cylinder right on top of the same origin that I did the other one. Notice how I still have the same flyouts for the number of subdivision around the circle of the cylinder. I'm going to reduce this to four. Looks pretty good. Now, I also have a dimension in here. So let me go ahead and hit the green check. I've got a dimension in the sketch picture about how big that cylinder should be. So I'm first gonna right click on the first uh, primitive that I created over in my feature tree and go ahead and hide that. I can see that 60 millimeter dimension. I'll rotate the model, maybe zoom to the top view orientation. And then back on my subdivision tab, I want to scale that primitive by a distance. I'll go ahead and click the button. It's placing the three icons. And all I need to do here is just line those up with the primitive that I've got and then enter in my value. So I'll put in 60 and hit the green check to confirm. If I want to increase the opacity just to check myself, make sure it covers, I can. Looks like we're good. And I'm going to switch back to a right hand view, click on the chair. And I'm going to move this so it's inside my initial primitive. So far, so good. Now that I've got these two shapes where they need to be, about the right size based on my picture, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this primitive. And I need to add a hole in there and combine those together. So, what I'm going to do is switch back into X Design. And I'll combine my two solids for this primitive, the two primitives that I created, and then we'll go ahead and add the hole. 
So I'm going to hit the X key on my keyboard, switch back into X design. Transition is complete. And then come into the Features tab here. There is a split command. I'm going to click the arrow and choose Combine. All I have to do here is just click a couple of faces on the two primitives and hit my green check. Now they're just one solid. With that done, I'm going to click on the edge, go ahead and add a fillet. This will be a four millimeter fillet all the way around. And since I'm in X design, now I can also shell the bottom of this out. So before I add my cut, I will do that as well. I'll come to my shell command, select any of the bottom faces, put in the magnitude of two, that's the thickness I want, and make sure I turn on the tangent propagation for this as well. Go ahead and green check. I don't need my sketch pictures anymore, so I can click on that and say hide. Hide this one as well. And we're going to add the last cut that we need on this plane. So I'll click this plane, select a new sketch. I'm going to draw a circle, add my smart dimension. It's going to be 35 millimeter and then apply my cut. So I'm going to just click on extrude. And remember, this is a super feature. I can switch back and forth from extrude, revolve, sweep, and then adding and removing material as well. So I'm going to change this from adding to a cut, and I'm going to say through all. Green check. And there is my freeform component that I created using that push-pull technique in X shape, and I completed the model using X design. Let me go ahead and turn my opacity slider up. We can take a look at what we've done. So I hope that I've been able to show that the X shape application is, is really pretty intuitive. It's straightforward. We will place a dummy solid, a generic shape in our environment, and then use the on-screen manipulators to push and pull, manipulate that geometry however we want, kind of like we would molding clay. It's a very powerful tool because we don't have to go in and out of specific surfacing commands in our parametric modeling environment. It's very quick and easy. I can use whatever type of reference, pull the model how I want, and seamlessly switch back and forth between parametric and freeform design by just hitting a key on my keyboard. So again, all of my part modeling, assembly modeling is in X design. I was able to combine that together uh, with X shape and it all is in one web-based cloud online platform from the 3D experience. If you have any more in-depth questions or would like to get more information about any of the X-Shape, X-Design, or platform offerings, please contact your local MLC CAD representative.